Spicy Morgan is here today because we are doing the worst makeup that I tried in 2022. I was very honest this year <laughs> about my thoughts on the makeup that I tried. I actually have a whole short form or short video series that I do every month of the products that I didn't like in the month. Um, I've actually gained a lot of followers from it, so I think you guys are liking the honesty. So there was a lot of products for me to go through this year that I didn't like, but these ones, they take the cake, okay? It is not just not liking these. All of these products individually, they evoke anger in me because they're so bad. <laughs> I'm being dramatic here, but I really actually like hate these products and cannot get these to work for me, okay? If you like these, good for you. It's just not good on me. I mean, my makeup right now, if you look really close, it looks, it looks awful. All of these products, you know, I've tried multiple ways to use them and they just do not perform in the way that I want them to perform. So these are the standouts and in not a good way of 2022. So let's go ahead and get started. I didn't add skincare except for this one because it's so horrific that I needed to talk about this. This is the Drunk Elephant Daily Defense Protection Sunscreen SPF 30. <laughs> I bet you this protects you from the sun really well, but it does not blend into the skin. I have to actually get really rough to get it to go into the skin. And then after that, I look so sweaty and oily and greasy. You can't put makeup over top because you look horrible. I actually brought this when my mom and dad visited and my mom was like, hey, can I use some of your sunscreen? I was like, yeah, you can have this. I got this in a PR package. And my mom has a medium skin tone. When she put this on, I looked at her and I was like, Mom, your skin is like pinkish gray. She could not get this to blend into her, her skin tone. So if you're medium to deep, you're going to be looking like you're wearing a mask and looking extremely ill. So this is terrible. Even on my skin, can't get it to soak in nothing. There's no saving this, okay? This is like my backup of my backup of my backup of sunscreens. I use this when I'm desperate. <laughs> this year, I feel like the foundation launches were not good. I mean, it was really trendy to have those lightweight tinted moisturizer style products which in all honesty I think just just make me look greasy they all sat on top of my skin I was not feeling a large majority of the foundation launches so let's start off with this guy right here this is the newest addition to this video I tried it two days ago and I just I already know it's one of the worst tinted moisturizers I've ever tried this is the morphe glow stunner hydrating tinted moisturizer anything you don't like about a tinted moisturizer like this this has it it is so patchy it will peel itself up it sinks into dry patches it oxidizes like a mofo it's not cute it is not cute at all it just made my skin look horrible and i push through bad makeup days if i have my makeup on i'm leaving it on even if it's kind of bad because you can just take it off at the end of the day who cares this one i put it on my skin and i was like we are not leaving this like this i need to take this off and i never do that i even went onto instagram to tell you guys how much i hated this product yeah definitely one of the worst products i put on my face this year alongside this one right here this is the makeup revolution super dewy skin tint tinted moisturizer this will stick to every little hair on your face and even if you're not dry this will make you look dry i do have dry skin i would say it's more normal to dry but this makes non-existent dry patches show up on my face. It sits on top. It makes me look greasy. Also quite patchy looking on the skin. Don't don't pick this up. It, it's not good. <laughs> mm. Now earlier in the year, we have the launch from Jaclyn Cosmetics, which this did not go over well and I, I'm on the bandwagon with this. This is a skin perfecting blurring skin tint. I have all of these foundations on my face right now, so oh my God. I'm looking rough. But I apply this to the center of my face because I got a horrifically light color for myself because the models on the website looked like my skin tone. Like it looked like this ran very, very dark. 
but then it didn't. And normally when I pick up the wrong color, I'm like, okay, that's my fault. It is not my fault. The pictures do not match what the actual color is. Other than that, this, I can't, it is so dry on skin. It literally dries as it's sitting on your skin and then you can't blend it out. It makes your skin look very, well, maybe not your skin, but my skin. It makes my skin look very aged, very patchy. I think the demos are going to do all the talking on this one because the shade is a little light. You can see how terribly it sits on my skin. So I just have to show you that, show you how bad it blended. The only reason this has been sitting in my collection was specifically to put it in this video so you could see this ain't it. No, no, no. This is also a newer product and the products that I just talked about were so bad that those actually make this one look really good. <laughs> this is the Rose Ink Skin Enhance Luminous Tinted Serum. And this one is just very, very overpriced. So how it works, because it looks interesting, is there's little pigment balls in here. The best way I like to apply it is to kind of explode the balls on your hand and apply this. But I feel like this also kind of sinks into every pore and you can see it. it looks patchy and it looks dry. It is not cute. However, the previous products that I talked about made my skin look so dry that I actually use this over top, particularly over top of the Jacqueline to um, make my skin look a little bit more hydrated. This didn't do much in helping. You can see how it sits on the nose. It's very unflattering. I probably should return this since I bought this recently. I don't normally return things just because this is my job. I, I don't need to produce waste in that way. I normally like to give it to somebody who wants to try it, but no, terrible. Don't buy that. Then, okay, another foundation. This one should be of no surprise to you. I was so disappointed with this that I talked about it every opportunity that I could. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. Patrick Ta has such a good eye and skill for makeup and the products that he produces, but I really do not like this one. Again, the others were so bad that I actually used this to fix all of the foundations that I had underneath. But every time I wear this foundation and I look in the mirror, especially if I'm a little closer to the mirror, my skin looks really heavy. It looks a little aged because it's sitting on top of my skin and it looks dry. Everything about it just looks really heavy on my skin. It is better when you apply less, but it's just not a good flattering foundation for me. I never like the way that my skin looks when I wear this. But because those other ones were so bad, I have this kind of over top of everything to make my skin look a little better. So this is the best of the worst, but I don't recommend this. And then the powder as well is also very drying. I was hoping because I don't like the cream foundation in here that maybe the powder would aid it. No, it just makes my skin look even more dry and heavy. So we'll never reach for these probably ever unless it's a negative video like today. But this does have a little bit more coverage than the products that I also previously talked about, which is why I, I tried to use this to aid the makeup, but my makeup looks so stinking heavy. Now it's more heavy than normal because I have other products layered underneath, but this is no favors to my skin at all. And I'm disappointed because Patrick Todd creates beautiful, beautiful products. The next one and the last foundation that I have to talk about, I caused an uproar on TikTok with this, but I, I'm not lying. Okay, this is the Jones Road What The Foundation, and this was like kind of a you either love it or you hate it. I hate it. So it makes my skin look extremely greasy and oily, and then it also doesn't dry down, so my hair sticks to it. I have a lot of flyaways, so I got all types of hair stuck to my face when I wear this, so it makes it completely impractical. And then also when you let it set, it separates the oil and the product, which the people defending the product will say, well, you're supposed to mix it every time. She told you, that's the point. I don't wanna mix it every time. I shouldn't have to. I don't have any other foundation products that require me to do that. And honestly, even if it just sits like this, it leaks onto whatever surface I have it on. The oil just seeps out. It's an extremely messy product. Just trying to open it today, my hands got super duper oily. It's just completely impractical when it comes to the packaging and the formulation. It's not that it looks bad on the skin, but I, I do look sweaty. And since I live in such a warm climate, it doesn't work out, especially when I have really frizzy hair with a lot of flyaways, sticks in my face. Impractical all across the board. Now concealers, a few concealers did launch this year and honestly I was not impressed really with any other than the Milk Makeup Concealer. I thought it was a bad concealer year. I feel like all of them were supposed to be really hydrating, but it actually just made the 
concealer look really heavy on the under eye, which ages the under eye. But I felt like I could like make them work even though I didn't like them. I didn't have a hatred towards most of the concealers except for this one. This is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Perfecting Concealer. I also accidentally got this in a shade too light, but this is so, 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 so drying, both looking as well as application. I made the mistake once again, just out of habit of applying it to both eyes before I blended it out, but this concealer will set down so quick. <laughs> So you have to be really careful and like rush to get it done. And not only that, once you blend it, it looks really, really dry and aging. And you can see right here, it's just it's not very flattering. I heard for a lot of those of you with more mature under eyes, it's not flattering on my under eyes. It's very, very drying. And I like the idea of this, right? That this concealer is supposed to dry down quickly, so you don't need powders. You only need a thin layer, but the execution just was not great. I have not grabbed for this concealer since I got all of my reviews and videos out of the way for it because I didn't want to. Moving on to cream blushes. Blush was another big thing this year that I felt like there were so many amazing blushes. It's not like the concealers where the concealer sucked this year. So many amazing blushes launched, but because the blushes were so trendy, a lot of bad ones launched as well. Cream blushes were the thing this year. So I purchased, this was in the spring Sephora sale, the Ilia Multi Stick Face Palette. And this is my mistake. I didn't realize that this was the Multi Stick Face Formula. I don't like that formula, uh, but I thought I'd give it a chance with these because these have some permanent shades in here and I had wondered maybe if the ones that I tried in the past just weren't good shades. No, I just don't like this formula. This palette is pretty useless to me. These don't have any pigment. Now some people swear by these, so you know, take my review with a grain of salt, but these do about nothing for me. I can't get them to show up on my cheeks, even the deepest shade, uh, and they aren't very flattering as lip glosses as well. So this was a waste of money. Don't recommend it. Don't like this formula from Ilia. And then uh, I wanted to love these so bad because I think they're so cute. These are the Tarte cheek stains. Aren't they adorable? <sighs> Performance, they're not. A bit of a packaging error here. It's leaking. This, all three of the ones that I have are leaking like this. Isn't that odd? But it also, it has a film over top of where it's dried up. And then the worst part is this doesn't really show up. If I really build the color, I can get it to show up on my cheeks. I don't want to have to build up the color. And I even use the deepest shade, which you think would show up the most. You'll see, I didn't get much. I applied it to the lips, the tiniest stain, but these are almost useless and the packaging leaks in my drawers, which I don't understand. So between those two factors, I just, I can't get behind these, not for me. And then I have a couple tube blushes. So this one I heard a lot of good things about, but unfortunately it didn't work out for me. The Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush. I wanted to like these so bad because I do love the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer and I love Laura Mercier in general. This does not sit pretty on my skin. At the finish of it's like the Tinted Moisturizer, so it's very pretty in that regard, but it applies so patchy to my cheeks. I have to keep layering and layering. And then it also makes the makeup underneath look worse. And I think you can see that in today's demo. Like the finish of it is beautiful, but the coverage is uneven and then it also kind of disrupts what I have going on underneath. So I wanted to like this. They sent me a package of like all of the shades and I wish these worked out for me. I really wish they did, but I can't justify it. It's not, it's not a good product. And then the other kind of tube blush that I have here is from the new line from YSL. This is the only item that I've tried from this line and I think I picked the wrong one. This is the Balmy Lip and Cheek Tint. Did not work out for me. This feels like I'm putting lip gloss on my face. It moves the product underneath. I have it on this cheek and it looks really thick and heavy as well. I didn't like it as a blush and I was like, okay, well, it feels more like a lip gloss anyways. Let me try it as a lip gloss. Again, it just looked really uneven and almost drying on my lips. So this is a tinted Vaseline, if I'm being honest, and it, it doesn't it doesn't look good anywhere. So don't like those. This one might be the biggest disappointment of the year for me. I just, I'm really disappointed in the Patrick Ta Major Headline Blush Palette Volume 2. I don't know if I'm more disappointed by the foundation or this, but this is a Volume 2. I loved Volume 1. I thought it was an all-star blush palette. Everything that could be wrong with this is wrong with this. So for one, the powder highlight here fell out completely shattered. And the first one that I ordered came completely shattered. So then I got this one. And then this one 
one completely shattered, which is fine because this highlight wasn't even good, so I, <laughs> I don't care. There is this cream highlight here, which disrupts the foundation underneath, and if you put the powder highlight that was here, it looks really chunky and thick and heavy and unflattering on the cheek. The cream blushes pick up product underneath, and between layering these two, your face is glittery. I just, I don't know what happened between this year's and last year's because they're completely different. I spent way too much money on this for it to be like this bad. And I know I'm not the only one who thinks that because a lot of you guys were shocked as well that this one, it's not the same. It does not look good. I feel like the, the cream formulations are different. They feel a little bit more Vaseline-y to me. I don't know. It, mm. So this was an earlier launch in the year from Chanel and the product, the formula itself is fine, but I feel some type of way because I think I spent like $70 on this. This is the Blush Comet in the shade Peche Cosmique. <laughs> I'm not French. This is a blush. It's really, really light and it doesn't perform as a highlighter either. I suppose if you're very, very fair, this could work for you, but they charge way too dang much for this. So I tried to use it today because my base was looking so bad. So I thought a good powder would help anyways. And I like awkwardly put it in between the highlight area and the blush area. And it just kind of, it looked like I put a powder that was too light on my face. I spent way too much money on this. Okay. I put this in the video because I'm mad about it. It evoked my emotions in me. <laughs> Don't buy this color. They did come with another color of this that is better. The formula is fine, but I got duped with this one. I certainly did. And then I have two face sprays. So the first one is from Milani. This is the Make It Last Sunscreen Setting Spray. Emphasis on the sunscreen because the original Make It Last, we like her. She's good. This one burns my skin. That's not good, right? A setting spray should not burn my skin. And the smell is horrific. It's so strong. It, I don't know what they did with this, but they need to undo it ASAP because I like the idea that it has sunscreen in it, but I mean, it burns my face. That's not good. And then I do have another setting spray. I want to like this so bad, but application is so painful. This is the Melanie Mills Super Light Long Lasting Setting Spray. And I think, I really do believe that this does make makeup last longer, but I do not own another setting spray that literally feels like I'm applying hairspray to my face. It smells like hairspray, it's so strong. And then as it stays in the air after you spray it, if you breathe in, like I choke. I've choked while using this. That shouldn't happen when I do my makeup. I'm not sensitive to fragrance either. In fact, I love it. Give me all the fragrance. This one, I breathe in and I'm like, <sighs> when I apply this, oh, it's a no for me. Oh, I forgot one item for the face. I do have a highlighter. I've been saving, I was gonna declutter this, right? And then I was like, no, this is going in the worst of videos. So this is from Revolution Pro from the Marilyn Monroe collection. This is the highlighter from that collection. And <laughs> this is the glitteriest highlighter I've ever, ever seen. Now, it doesn't scream Marilyn Monroe to me either if I'm being honest. This actually would be a pretty eyeshadow. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually about to apply it to my eyeshadow. Okay, I can make it work, but I just have never seen anything marketed as a highlighter be so glittery and stark white and unflattering. Did this deserve to be in this video though? Because it's a pretty eyeshadow, right? That's really pretty. I think I like it now. I'm still gonna leave it in this video because don't buy it and use it as a highlight because it's literally pure glitter. I put this on my face and I was like, I can not leave the house like this, but it's kind of pretty on the eyes. <laughs> I have one eyebrow product that I tried this semi recently. This is from Lottie London. It's the Arch Rival Microfine Brow Pen. This is the shade Brown. They need to rename this to the shade Red because it's it's really like a red eyebrow pencil. It's not even a pencil, it's a marker. So what else I don't like about this is so much product comes out. It's so wet and thick. It looks extremely unnatural. If you're coming out with a brow marker, the product that comes out needs to be limited so it can look like actual hair like strokes. I might as well have taken a children's marker and wrote in my eyebrows because that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like I took a Sharpie or something and drew in my eyebrows. Looks terrible, doesn't blend out. Horrific color, bad brow marker all around. Couple of eye products. Now, I don't have any eyeshadow palettes in this video because I will be doing a worst of 
2022 eyeshadow palette, so that deserves its own video, but I do have a couple pot products. And I thought this came out last year, but I tried these at the end of January from Charlotte Tilbury. These are the matte eyes to mesmerize, and then they are essentially cream eyeshadows with a matte finish. <laughs> I don't know, this one might be the worst launch. Like quality-wise, this was not good. These were incredibly hard to use. They are so dry, very difficult to blend out. I did use the lightest shade that I have, Smoky Taupe, with a brush today as my crease color. Honestly, I got it to work out, but it takes somebody who has some skill in makeup to be able to work these out with the darker shade. I find it nearly impossible to use these. If you apply it with a finger, they don't blend out at all. You can't get the edges to blend because they're so so dry the consensus was very negative on this very terrible very hard to work with a surprisingly bad launch from Charlotte Tilbury who normally I think does a great job with her products and then next up I have this cream eyeshadow pot these are the just a sec eyeshadows from Jones Road and I really wanted to like this but no matter what I do with this product it creases like a mofo I have it on my eyes today I did try and blend it out before filming but I can kind of see the crease already starting again it looks gorgeous all over the eyes like I'm not gonna lie it looks like a stunning product but it does not wear I do not typically have difficulty with longevity of eyeshadow I don't have oily eyelids or anything so if I'm having issues with this staying and transferring and creasing if you have an oily eyelid that's going to be absolutely disastrous so I could not get that to work with me whatsoever and I really wanted it to because the color is gorge but nah couldn't do it. I have an eyeliner to share with you. This is from Essence. It's the Lash Princess Liner. I was excited about these because I love the Essence Lash Princess Mascara, but this is just a bad quality eyeliner. I really like the applicator. I find it very easy to draw the shape, but you can see how sheer it looks on my eyes. It's gray. It doesn't build up in depth or color. It's a very, very sheer eyeliner as you apply it from one eye to the other it loses some of the product or the ink or whatever is in there it's not good i was disappointed by this it doesn't give enough color it's not dark enough it's too sheer watery and it runs out of color as you apply it so yeah disappointed by that um, the next eyeliner that I have is from Melt. This is a slick waterline eye pencil. So I have a lot of difficulties with this eyeliner. When you swatch it, I guarantee you will fall in love with it in store if you put these against the hand because they are super creamy, super pigmented. But when it comes to application, that works against you because you have absolutely no control when applying this. Now this is formulated or intended for the waterline. I think it stays a good time in the waterline, but I still find it so slippery that I make a mess underneath my eye because I can't just get precision on my waterline. And if you're trying to apply this to the upper lash line, forget about it because <laughs> every time I try it, and I'm relatively skilled with eyeliner, I just like get it everywhere because it's so slick. You have no control with this. I want to like this so bad because when you swatch it, you're like, oof creamy pigmented smudgeable but it is a mess applying this thing i'm telling you i really really struggle with it and then the last part that i have is for lips didn't really try many bad lip products this time around but this is a mystery to me this is from armani beauty i don't even know what the formula is that's this ecstasy mirror in the shade 100 i don't know what this is supposed to be it comes out almost like a, a lip gloss right but then it like completely disappears and then it won't stay on my lips at all it's unflattering it smells like chemicals really bad uh, i don't get it i don't understand and with it being from armani beauty i expect quality i don't get that from this i don't even know what it's supposed to be but it's very poorly done whatever it is so there we have it you guys those are my least favorite products the worst products if you ask me of 2022 i hope you guys enjoyed this video a little bit of trash talk sweet morgan is coming soon though because that means after this one 
I have the best makeup of 2022 coming up and I'm excited to kind of shift the narrative here. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video anyways. Is there any products in here that you disagree with? If you love them, stand up for them in the comments. I'd love to hear it. It's great for you to share that these products do work for you because maybe somebody will like what I don't like about these. So make sure you like and subscribe to this channel because guess what? I'm posting another video tomorrow because we are in Vlogmas. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.